Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. By virtue of my office as president of the Royal Institution for the Advancement of Learning and as chair of the Board of Governors of McGill University, I declare that the governors have, in accordance with the statutes of this university, nominated and appointed the Honorable Michael A. Meehan to be Chancellor of McGill University. I will join Mr. Meehan for the oath of office. Michael Arthur Meehan, the governors of this university have nominated and appointed you to the high office of Chancellor. Do you promise to fulfill the duties and obligations of the chancellorship in accordance with the charter and statutes of this university and in all ways properly open to you to promote the interests of the Royal Institution for the Advancement of Learning and the Welfare of McGill University? I do. Then by, one, <laughs> then by, then by virtue of the authority vested in me as president of the Royal Institution for the Advancement of Learning, I install you in your office as the 19th Chancellor of McGill University. Thank you very Thank much. You. I can't quit now. No, you can't. You're in. You're in. The Governor General of Canada, who is also a visitor of McGill University, His Excellency the Right Honourable David Johnston, was unfortunately unable to attend today's ceremony, but has sent the following message. It gives me great pleasure to send my warmest greetings and congratulations to Michael Meehan on his installation as Chancellor of McGill University. As Governor General, I firmly believe Canada has benefited richly from the contributions of professionals, innovators, and educators who dedicate themselves to fostering what I like to call the, quote, diplomacy of knowledge throughout the world. Today, McGill staff, students, and alumni are honoring an individual who has demonstrated a stalwart commitment to enriching the lives of his fellow Canadians. Mr. Meehan, I congratulate you on this honor, and I thank you for making Canada a smarter, more caring place to live. <clears throat> now, Mr. Chancellor, I invite you to address the members of the graduating class, their families, and all those assembled here today, and then I ask you to preside over the fall convocation at McGill University. Madame la Principale, distinguished faculty, visiting delegates from sister universities, graduates, proud parents, and friends, incluant mes bons amis et confrères de classe, même s'ils le sont d'une autre grande université québécoise, l'ancien premier ministre du Québec, l'honorable Lucien Bouchard, et l'ancien premier ministre du Canada, le très honorable Brian Mulroney. Merci d'être ici. Merci. It's a huge privilege for me, a graduate of McGill and the father of two McGill alumni, to stand before you as the newly installed chancellor. And a particular pleasure to salute you, the graduating class of 2014, and to acknowledge your intelligence dedication and perseverance. Make no mistake, given the many distractions and hurdles that one must get over when pursuing higher education, it's no small feat to graduate from McGill, and you have every right 
to be very proud of your accomplishment. J'aimerais remercier tout particulièrement mon prédécesseur et ami Arnold Steinberg pour ses efforts inlassables au service de l'université. Il incarne tout le meilleur de Miguel et servira de modèle exceptionnel au chancelier novice que je suis. Le seul reproche que je puisse lui faire est d'avoir laissé des souliers bien grands à chaussée. And speaking of big shoes to fill, you were very kind, Madam Principal and uh, Mr. Chair of the Board, not to mention that I am the second, only the second non-resident chancellor in McGill's storied history of over 200 years. But the first chancellor who did not rise, reside in Montreal nevertheless had excellent training for the job, a claim that I certainly cannot make, and that was being Prime Minister of Canada. I refer, of course, to Sir Robert Borden. Now, as I said, being a McGill graduate is something quite special. It's no exaggeration to say, without your ongoing involvement, your involvement as alumni, McGill will not succeed in achieving its lofty goals. You are now and forever a part of the family of one of the world's great universities. All of us with great pride were reminded of this only days ago, when McGill graduate Dr. John O'Keefe was named the co-winner of the 2014 Nobel Prize in Medicine. McGill is an institution whose graduates have gone on, like Dr. O'Keefe has, to shape a better Canada and a better world. I ask you to seek to emulate their example in the years ahead. And standing here on a McGill stage, I can't help but recall the words of perhaps the greatest McGill alumnus of all time. I speak, of course, of Sir Wilfrid Laurier. Like you soon will, he walked across the McGill stage as a member of a graduating class. And also like you, Laurier was blessed with talents that could have taken him to the top in any number of fields. He could have been wealthy, but he chose public service instead. Near the end of his long life and years after his terms as prime minister had concluded, he left young people with some advice. I believe these words by Laurier are just as relevant today as they, were, as they were when he spoke them almost 100 years ago. I ask you to consider them in the years ahead. And if you do follow Laurier's advice and path to service and give back to your community while working in your chosen profession, you'll discover, just as he did, that Quebec is worth it, that Canada is worth it, and that our world is worth it. And I quote, as for you who stand today on the threshold of life with a long horizon open before you, let your aim and purpose in good report or ill, in victory or defeat, be so to live, so to serve, as to do your part to raise even higher the standard of life and living. Once again, félicitations à tous et chacun et merci.